Welcome to 10 Talks, real conversations for champions with champions, where a champion life is a 10 life. Thank you for joining our team today. I'm Carlette Patterson, your head sports life coach at the Life Training Academy, and it's our desired outcome to share our passion for sports life coaching by training you to live a 10 life. You and your life matter. Let's get coached. Hi team, welcome to 10 Talks, Real Conversations with Champions. We are talking today about how to have career success in really challenging and times of change. We want to anchor in our well-being and we want to really think about how can we set ourselves up for success. So we have a guest today that's going to take us through that journey. She's going to introduce us to winning strategies and really talk about a playbook that we've never played with, a playbook that has plays that have never happened before, and yet how can we make sure that we're winning the day and winning really setting ourselves up for success. So Sue, welcome to 10 Talks. Love to hear a little bit about the power of your story. Great, hello Carlette, it's great to be with all of you. Um, hi, I'm Sue Suber, and um, I'm really excited to be with you today. I'm uh, talking to Carlette from just north of Seattle, Washington where my husband and I live, and we uh, moved here uh, late last year and just moved into our new house, so we're settling in and enjoying all the newness and all the fun of this beautiful spring in Seattle. Um, Carlette knows a lot about my career, so let me just tell you just a quick snapshot of my background. I spent the last 35 years um, as a business executive in large corporations. For the first half of my career as a senior communications executive, um, doing everything from investor relations and financial communications, business communications, crisis communications, and employee communications, both in positive, easy times in the business environment and in times of change or of times of real stress and duress and economic downturns. The second half of my career, I've been a chief human resources officer. Um, I've spent the last 18 years in three companies in the top talent job, if you will, working with my CEOs and boards and our senior executive teams in global companies, um, sometimes going through rapid, exciting growth and acceleration, sometimes going through business transformations that were self-induced, business choosing to change itself, and times like now, although probably never um, like this unprecedented moment, but still times of massive change on um, economic troughs, um, big financial swings, where the businesses absolutely had to move with speed and clarity around where they were going, why they were going there, and how it was all going to unfold, not just for the business executives and their shareholders, but also for their employees. So we are in an unprecedented time of change, but Carlette, I think some of the things that we'll talk about today um, are things that is, um, are tried and true mm -hmm. as a senior business executive or a manager when you're leading your organization to change. I think the big difference here is that we're faced with unprecedented business change and economic change, which is now causing us to be faced with unprecedented um, family change, work from home change. And I think it's the collision of these two things if we can start to think about these two things more as an intersection and how do we dovetail them rather than this crazy collision that I think we're all feeling, I think it might actually be kind of a helpful mindset. You talked about a little bit about wellness, and I think one of the key themes in all of the change that I've done, whether it's been self-imposed or imposed by macroeconomic factors, is when you approach it with a can-do attitude, mm -hmm and you approach it with as much optimism while being pragmatic, I think you have the best chance of leading with less stress and also helping your people adopt and accept the changes that are, might be very, very unfamiliar. I think there's a thing that says no pain, no gain. I think we're definitely getting tested around um, that theme right now. Well, Sue, thank you for just bringing your words of wisdom and you really joining our team in a way to help us navigate this change. I mean, it is, as you said it so eloquently, just something that we've never experienced yet. We do have some film on really how do we capture the winning strategies, the best practices, what is great for change management, and now we can add it both personally and professionally 
because with people working from home, that's changed as well as really the dynamic of not having that, that team environment in your offices, which can be really important for people from a ritual and routine perspective, you know, a place to go, a routine on, on how to be set up for success to work. So let's talk about your top 10 list. I know you have great words of wisdom for really navigating change, and I want to start with that. So let's talk about just that beginning of how do we really set ourselves up for success, not only during the change, but as well as setting ourselves up so when the change is lifted or as we, you know, step forward into the next, whatever that is, I've kind of given up going back to normal because I think we're, we're rewriting that definition. What can we be doing right now to make sure that we're going to have career success? Well, I think Carla, the number one winning strategy is really to be both pragmatic um, and an optimist. So those two things sometimes feel like they're, you know, at odds with each other. But I think um, whether you're leading in the pandemic or you're leading into some more normal business transformation or change period, um, it's really important not only for yourself, but for how you talk about it and how you move through it for your board, if you have a board, for your shareholders, for your investment partners, and maybe if you're privately held for your customers, your suppliers, and importantly, your employees. Um, I'd also say that for many of us who are also navigating at home, um, when you take off your leadership hat and you put on your partner hat or your parenting hat, especially your parenting hat, being both pragmatic and optimistic is really important. Um, I think the second thing that's really important is transparency. Um, more simply said, I would just call this straight talk around setting expectations. What do we know? What don't we know? What are we unclear about? What are the things that with some level of confidence we could probably do um, to get a new plan underway? Which really leads me to the third winning strategy, which is Many of you may have long-term strategies for your businesses. That might be a, a two to three to five year plan. Um, but what you really need to rethink right now isn't even a short-term plan, which you might often think about as a one-year plan, but I call it a near range plan, which for the next couple of weeks, the next month, whatever, the, whatever you can see in your crystal ball with a little bit of clarity and a little bit of definition, might give you clues on how to set a near-term, a near-range vision for your organization. And that's something that you then, as, as winning strategy number four, want to share with your team, engage them, and get their input. Now, this thought of engaging people, I'm a big fan of it, and I've seen it work. But lots of times leaders, especially in a crisis, feel the need to go really fast. And while speed is important, um, your employees may be feeling very anxious, not just about the professional things, but about the personal things. And one of the ways to get buy-in around change, especially if you have a team that's not comfortable with change or hasn't done much of it before at all, is to really engage them into the process. So what are the facts and data that are the foundation of your short-range vision? Why do, you, why do you see some of that evidence and some of those clues? And get them in a short dialogue about it so they begin to engage around facts and data that maybe they didn't have access to before. Then get their input on what, where would it work? Where would it might be vulnerable? Do they have any suggestions that you haven't thought about? But let me be really clear here. As the leader, ultimately the decision of what you do to sit squarely on your shoulders. So if you decide that you want to take some of the input, that's great. I think importantly when you engage people, when you reach final decisions, you want to thank them for their input. Mm. If you decide not to accept all of the input or some of the input, you want to explain why you made the decision that you made. So at least they feel heard. And then you want to ask them for their buy-in and their commitment to what they're going to do on this near-range strategy. So thank you for, yeah, just in terms of, let's just capture a little bit about that and talk about, you've done a really great job of really outlining 
the the why the how and really that that power of the personal connection you know making sure that they feel honored and heard we do want to talk about the anxiety of the uncertainty so we do know as many great plans as we make or you know the desire that we have as leaders to take care of our team and to make sure they're set up for success moment by moment we're all getting more information that can change even the best plans so as we stay optimistic and as we stay transparent and, and really sharing the vision and making short-term goals and celebrating the wins that we're able to have, what do you do with that underlying anxiety of, you know, am I still going to have a job? Am I on the team? I mean, it's as if that as much as we want to stay optimistic, there's this negativity or fear base that's running through us that happens in change. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I, my experience, and I've helped a lot of organizations grow and shrink, mm -hmm. and the shrink is very painful. So I think that regardless of, um, especially if you don't know the answer, you might be in a situation where you haven't had to lay people off, you haven't had to furlough people, you haven't had to cut pay or benefits. If you're there, you've been in a really nice position, mm -hmm. but perhaps you're getting worried. So I, I think it is never a good idea to say things like, I'll never lay people off, I'll never have to make changes. Because I think more often than not, especially in a situation like the one we're in, something may emerge that causes you to say, I think maybe I do need to make some downward shifts and, and downscale my organization. So don't make promises that you cannot keep or that you don't have a thousand percent clarity on for the next thousand years. Because it, it's not, I think it's not fair to people to offer a, a, such a firm reassurance that everything is okay if perhaps it might not be. So again, we go back to transparency. One of the tools that I've used in coaching my business leaders and in my HR organizations as well over the decades around getting ready for this and how do you answer that question of will I have a job, what you can say is based on what I can see right now, this is where we are on our cash flow. We're in a good enough position for the next couple of weeks or the next month that we should be okay under a certain set of circumstances. But after that, you know, I'll have to continue to evaluate where we are. So I would say um, uh, be honest with people, but be measured in your words. So I would get some quiet time, close your door, get out your pen or, you know, tap out on your keyboard, think about what your one, two, or three key messages are going to be about what you can see, what's making you feel reassured, what's making you feel anxious and why, and what that might mean for the structure of your organization. I would keep it short. And I think, you know, you don't want to be updating your team every week on the subject of do I have a job or don't I have a job, right. unless something has changed. So Beautiful. again, one idea in the circumstances, you might be having short team calls with your leaders every week. If you're not, it might be a good idea to just be checking in. This could be one subject that you revisit with your leadership, um, along with other subjects. But again, I wouldn't do a lot of updating on this unless something has changed or unless you're getting a direct question from an employee. So great advice and great words of wisdom for our leadership. Let's talk about their team now. Let's talk about the person that is on the other end receiving this information or this update kind of once a month or being told that, you know, here's how we're going to be able to keep your job. How do they set themselves up for success to really work productively for the company, for themselves, and make sure that they too are, are really anchored in well-being for themselves personally and professionally? Right. Well, I think the power of recognition and celebrating wins is really important all the time, but especially now. So I'd say if you've got that near-range plan and you've been clear with people about their roles, their responsibilities, and the deadlines, yeah. as you're having, I'm assuming you may be having frequent calls, weekly calls, some projects are might even be daily calls with certain teams, make sure that as your team is getting close to milestones or reaching milestones, that you are coaching around continued, you know, let's go get the target, or you're celebrating the success and the wins. I think of some cheerleading now 
is greatly needed and probably more of this, not less of this, when it's warranted is a good idea, right? Because all you can do is reassure people that they're doing a great job when they're doing a great job and that the team hitting these near-term milestones is making a meaningful difference to you and the business right now. And I think it's those are the words that come out of your mouth. Great job. Thank you for hitting the, the targets and hitting our deadlines. What you're contributing is making a meaningful difference to the organization and to me as your CEO or as your manager. And I want to thank you and your team members for all the great work. I think thank you is those are the two most underrated words mm. as a business leader. And now is the time to pull them out of your pocket and use them with sincerity and authenticity and with the frequency that they want. And by the way, thank you is free. <laughs> and we could all use a few things that are free to our bottom line right now. And gratitude. I mean, that's really what we're talking about. You can use that both personally and professionally. You can use it at home and really practice that gratitude of, you know, being grateful for your family, being grateful for everyone's health. Speaking of that, we just want to do a shout out to our first responders and to the nurses and the people in the grocery stores. Talk about a huge thank you. And with great gratitude, we want to thank the people that are really keeping our world together right now as the rest of us really go into this change in such a big way. They are the champions that we want to just say a thank you to right now and make sure that every day in our small day, in terms of the small things that we're doing and the big things that we're doing, that we are thanking every person that we're having the opportunity to have an exchange with, whether it's, you know, at the grocery store or with our children or with our boss. So, you know, thank you, Sue, for bringing up that simple little uh, free gift of great gratitude and just being able to make sure that we have some power, that we feel like there's some hope and we feel like there's something that we can be doing day in and day out to make sure that we have a sense of control over the things that we can control. So, you know, that's really powerful from a spirit perspective and, and just being able to keep our, our mental toughness, our physical toughness. You know, we're, we're calling on champions at this point to really dig deep and to find a way that we can all get through this, however the result is, in a better way. Let's talk about performance barriers. You know, let's talk about the things that are getting in the way of us maybe not being able to be as productive as we want or not showing up really the leader that I wish I could be because this is something I, I haven't experienced and the anxiety or fear may be getting, getting to me at some point. So talk about performance barriers and talk about actions to change. Right. So first, let's talk a little bit about employees' performance barriers, right? So you've got your plan, you've got your short-term goals, you know the milestones that people are supposed to be hitting. Um, whether you've got star performers or people who feel like they're struggling a bit, one idea would be, in addition to your team meetings, would be to reach out on individual calls. Mm -hmm. Make a couple of phone calls a day to either people on your team or people on you know, their team, what we call a skip level call, where you go, you skip over your people and you go down a level and you tell your people you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. But you pick a few people just to call on the phone and say, hey, I'm calling to check in. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Is there anything that you need help with? Mm -hmm. Because I think particularly in this situation, performance barriers um, are emerging that in certain employees that you might never have seen before. And that can be stress around having young children at home and trying to, you know, manage kids in chaos when you're also trying to work, you know, long hours under this, um, under this, the rest of this pandemic. You also might have a partner who's working at home. Right. And, and, and if you have a partner and you have kids, then you've got a lot of moving parts in your life. And just the rate of change in trying to juggle everything, the distraction factor, distraction factor could be very high for some employees right now. And that's probably one of the first um, root causes of performance barriers that you want to explore. So I would say the first the first step is to make a personal call and check in. Ask how they're doing, what, what's working well, what's getting in their way. Is there something that they need to be able to work differently that would lift some of the distractions and the performance stress, right? For yourself, I think the challenge is 
um, many of us who are leaders in business also come home and we share leadership of our household with our partners. Or maybe you're a single parent um, and you're, you're leading on your own. So doing both of those things where you're trying to comfort and console and reassure at all hours of day and night can be exhausting emotionally and physically. So getting some sleep, good sleep hygiene is really important. But I know for my many decades in business, when I'm worried, sleep was usually on the light side because I'd be up thinking or, or worrying in the middle of the night or planning in the middle of the night. So in the absence of wonderful sleep hygiene, do a couple of things throughout the day to try to refresh yourself. One of them, Carlette, um, you taught me, it's called the joy break. Yes, we you love our joy breaks. About three minutes and you step away from whatever you're doing and you, in this particular case, find something to do that's quick, a three minute call with the best friend. Um, watch a short, fun video on YouTube. Listen to a favorite song or find a new song. Um, read a poem, um, a quick meditation or a short prayer, or something that simply will make you smile or laugh. And if you do those a couple times a day, you'll get a little oxygen, as I like to say. I think the other thing to do is to make sure that at the end of your work day, um, most of us are not driving home from work right now. Yes. So at the end of the work day, before you go back out to rejoin your family, Make sure that you take your former commute, your commuting time, let's call it 20 minutes, and repurpose the commuting time just for you. So in the 20 minutes, do something that is for you. Now this means you may not do household chores, you might not, you may not pay the bills, you may not do meal planning or grocery shopping. Um, you can call a friend or a family member and have a fun chat. You can take a bubble bath. You can paint your toenails, <laughs> you can um, pick up your guitar, yeah. um, you can go for a short walk or a short reflection, but get 20 minutes mm -hmm. to just do a set change. And by the way, I have a couple good friends who get up in the morning and shower and they put on their business clothes, whatever that might have been. Right. And at the end of their work day, at the beginning of the 20 minute reset that they're doing, they literally change clothes. And they put on their I'm at home now clothes yes. as if it's a costume change and it helps sort of reset um, their frame of mind. So there are little things that you can do, but no doubt as a leader, you're going to be feeling more stress in this time, not less stress. So taking the, the snapshot that you can in time to refresh and reset yourself are really important. So, so you stepped right into well-being in terms of really talking about that transition, sleep, honoring yourself. What are some other winning strategies for well-being under stress that as you watch your film, you have been through great stress, you've been through change, you've been through it in a positive and a, a not so positive way, and yet you really know the power of making sure that we're mentally sharp, we're showing up really in a good space to serve and support other people because that is our role. We are here as, you know, encouragers, as leaders, as really being on their support team, as well as taking responsibility for everything that's happening in a way that we wouldn't want everyone feeling that, but we do. So from a well-being perspective, how do we do this? Yeah, so I think it starts with a couple basics around um, just the physicality of moving through this. So number one is sleep when you can um, and meditate and um, relax when you can, especially if sleep is light. Um, watch out for too much caffeine and watch out for too much alcohol. They're easy go-tos when we're stressed. Um, I have a lot of friends, including men, who are joking about the tug of the refrigerator um, for those of us who are working at home. And so I would say do your best try to eat in a healthy way and put some comfort food in um, a little bit every day or do a comfort food Saturday or a comfort food Wednesday. So this is not a time to starve yourself um, or to start a crazy new extreme diet. Um, I do think that physical activity is a great um, reliever. Mm -hmm. um, getting out, going for a walk. If you don't have time for a walk, just step out on your deck or step out your front door and just get a quiet minute to listen to what's going on. 
Um, it's gotten very quiet around um, where most of us live. And it's really interesting if you practice an exercise in practicing being quiet, mm. just what you'll hear and what you'll observe. And little things of that can, like that can be very refreshing. I would also say the power of human contact is super important. Um, if, you're, if you are living alone right now, I think this is a lonely time. Yeah. And so I would use the, the virtual hug, the warmth, the warmth embrace of a voice or a last friend can be a really powerful thing. But if you are living with other people, um, go for a walk and hold hands, yeah. hug your kids, hug your dog, right? Do high fives, do fist bumps, yeah. um, have fun with it, but get some physical contact because it can be really reassuring. Um, and you might be surprised how much and how far a hug will go yeah. with people living under your roof um, who are also feeling very anxious and are looking to you for some reassurance. Well, Sue, I love your words of wisdom about connecting, about relationships, about authenticity, about truth, about joy. And team, I really want you to be able to just receive that during times of great change and challenge that that self-compassion is such a winning strategy. So that if you can start with yourself, take great care of yourself, and you know, this may be something new that we wanna take into our new normal, is that am I using this time to, to reset in any way, to maybe reflect? And think about what, what, you know, was I just kind of on this treadmill that was going and I was on automatic and this has given me an opportunity to, to take a bit of a time out to reevaluate who am I, what, how am I being for my colleagues, how am I being for my family, you know, am I being really the person that I want to be. So as we have this opportunity to use that as a reset or as just a halftime, as we may call it in terms of when you bring the team in and you have a chance to really reevaluate, take this opportunity to, to honor you and to honor the fact that you are doing the very best you can in a time that is very challenging and, and make sure that if it's not a fabulous day and it really hasn't gone your way that Go ahead and do that, that remote um, transition, change your clothes, put on those comfy clothes, hopefully have maybe a little bit of comfort food and some great comfort conversation. You know, we don't have to talk about this all the time. We can talk about, as we would say, our 10 moments, you know, the things that are happening in the day that, that are really interesting to us, that we're discovering about ourselves and that we're figuring out that it was a 10 just to be able to have a great conversation with somebody at work that I've never really taken the time to connect with. I got to not only be on their team to support them, but I also got to ask about their family. So how can we really reset and prioritize from a place of, of living a 10 life, making sure that when I'm not being my best self, I have some winning strategies. I respect that I'm gonna bump into performance barriers day in and day out. I'm gonna honor them, come up with an action to change, celebrate the short-term wins, and think about, okay, how do I wanna reset from what I've learned today to step into really being better tomorrow. I mean, at this point, every day is game day. It's a change every day. And we can take on that optimism as Sue started with to really say, I'm gonna do everything I can to set myself and my family, my partner, my friends up in a way that we can admit we're going through the tough times and we're gonna celebrate whatever we did in a good way and we're gonna learn from whatever didn't go well for us today. So we've got a lot of great of new thinking here, some new skills. So let's unpack a few more of your top 10 lists. So I know I think we were on about five when we started the conversation. Do you want to keep right. going? Right. So number five is really about communicating both the progress that you're making as your business transforms and the setbacks, right? Because your staff needs to hear both what's going well and where there are some challenges. Again, that's the pragmatic optimist as a leader, right? Um, number six is adjusting the plan. There's no doubt on um, every week that seems to go by as the pandemic unfolds and as our governors and our mayors are now starting to talk about reopening the economy, you're going to be tested again um, to readjust your near range plan and to begin to engage your people on how to figure out what are we going to do next. Um, having both structure and flexibility is winning strategy number seven. This one applies both at home um, and related to your professional life. So 
Um, these again are two concepts that sound like they are in um, at odds with each other. But I like structured flexibility because it lets you anchor to the things where you absolutely need to do things consistently and reliably, and where there is room for you to move with speed, some flexibility, and for your people to move with some autonomy. Mm -hmm. So I come out of a long uh, career in manufacturing. Now, I can tell you with certainty that one of the structured things that manufacturers are doing and a lot of other businesses are doing now around what are the protocols around safety and health as we begin to reopen our businesses and rethink our business models. So you absolutely want to declare with your staff and, and probably engage them in helping create the safety protocols, the rigor, and the training and communication around it to get your people ready. That's going to be super important for the viability of your business and the mindset and the confidence and the comfort of your people and your customers in either coming back to work or coming back to do business with you. Flexibility, you may want to have some ground rules and some rules of engagement or some guardrails for your people around where are the things they can flex, what kinds of decisions can they make on their own, and where do they where or who do they need to check in with. But I think this combination of structured flexibility is also going to be a really important concept. And this modification and adjustment of your nutrition plan, that will be an ongoing activity. Um, winning strategy number eight is about creating space to reflect. So we've been doing that a lot, I think, with our families and our employees in these early weeks of the pandemic. But the change and the transition will go on for some time. We could easily see ourselves, even into early next year, still working through a set of dynamic situations and dynamic changes. So um, I call this process reflections. And it, you can do it with your family and you can do it with your business teams. And it's simply about um, at the end of a meeting, or let's say you've had some problem emerge with a customer or supplier um, in your short-term business plan. At the end of the discussion, you might ask the team to just take a minute, think about um, and reflect on the conversation that you just had, and let everybody share how they're feeling in the moment. Um, the same can apply at home, right? We've got a lot of kids who want to go back to school. Um, we've got a lot of kids who maybe were going to do summer camps or go on vacation, right? And so giving people a chance to reflect out loud about how they're feeling both the good things and the bad things. Mm. These are good ways to both let people grieve around what they're missing, and then to redirect and ask them to also share something positive that they feel. So I, I call this reflection. So um, reflection, uh, or in piece of advice number nine, it's also reflect, but it's reflection with yourself. Mm. With a leader, you also need to be able to say, how am I doing? Yeah. How am I feeling? What do I need? And how can other people help me? Those are really important questions because leaders are sometimes prone to not asking for help. And this is a time where you should try to get more comfortable saying to your team, here's what I need from you. And of course, that usually plays the best when you first ask them, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What do you need? And what can I do for you? And then you can say and share a little bit about what you're feeling. Um, and then I think reflection um, number 10 around winning strategies is give yourself room to do three things privately. One is what I call breathing. One is what I call breathing. And the third one is what I call escaping. And so choose your weapon every day. Some days you might decide you need to do all three. Breathing is just take a break, exhale, take the three minute joy break, take that 20 minute commuting break at the end of your business day, right? Um, give yourself time to grieve. You may have been running a very successful business. You may have been doing really well financially, both at the business level and at the personal level. And now you might be finding that you're making lots of sacrifices. Um, you might be on a really tight budget at work, and you might be on a super tight budget at home. 
it's okay, and in fact, it's really healthy to grieve for the things that we can't access right now, and maybe we won't be able to access again in the way that we've done in the past. So I think it's really important to honor the loss. And I think that's also something you can do when you're having reflection conversations with your team and their staff is enable them to talk about, you know, something that they feel like they've lost mm. and that they're really missing. Because I think it brings it present and I think everybody can relate both to joy, but we can also relate to grief. And it's a way to comfort and console each other. And then the third thing is um, pull the escape patch, right? If that's a great book, if it's rolling up the rug in your living room and having a dance party, yeah. if it's um, turning on your shower and blasting the music to let the tears flow. Mm. That's both a form of grief, but it's also a form of escape. Yeah. Um, I love to cook, Carlette knows that. So yes. I've been cooking a lot in my house. And that's my um, both a joy break and an escape. So do the things that um, make your heart sing. Um, and all of those things should help sustain you in this um, crazy walk out of the pandemic. Um, remember, um, we will get through it. Yeah. Um, your business will get through it. Your teams will get through it. Your families will get through it. We'll all come out of it looking different, thinking different, feeling differently. And I think it might, the most important thing might be to be able to look back someday and say, here's what I gained in that really tough experience. So beautiful words of wisdom. Team, you got an incredible top 10 list that is going to be a huge winning strategy today, tomorrow, and as we step into our new future. I really want to just emphasize the power of a support team and that asking for whatever you need. We are so human at this point. And for any of us that have, have felt like we could wear that super cape and that we were managing it, you don't have to do that anymore. You can take the cape off and you know, yes, we're having to do incredible things day in and day out. This is an opportunity to really connect to your heart, to connect to the people that you love, the things that you love, to be honest about how you're feeling. Sue articulated it beautifully, the power of grief, the power of joy, the power of going through all of those things in one day. You know, maybe that was something you were used to doing either in an off season or on your holiday where we may not have those seasons during this particular season. So really giving yourself the opportunity to train for the new way that you want to be to accept change in a positive way. It's happening and you're doing the very best you can with it. And just to be able to ask for whatever you need. If you don't know what you need, this is an opportunity to discover that because you and your team will be stronger, both personally, professionally at home. You're going to be better when you're able to say, here's what works for me. Here's what doesn't work for me. How can I help you? How can I be of support to you? I just love the fact of really coming in as a team, igniting that power of team for champion change, being able to be a better person than I was yesterday because I've learned something new about myself. And I've been able to connect in a way that, that feels like we're human to human connection rather than just kind of getting through the day. So team, it's your opportunity to go out and make today a 10, discover your 10s, put into place some of Sue's winning strategies for her top 10, and let's just make today better because we had the opportunity to be optimistic, to connect, to do some of the things that maybe we didn't even know we needed to do, or maybe we didn't know we're part of a winning strategy. And Sue, thank you for just being on our team, sharing. Sue, I've always loved being able to connect with you. It's been an honor to be in your life and just being able to share you with our team and what incredible words of wisdom you shared today. What a gift you've given us. Thank you, Carla. It's been great to be with you and I hope some of this is helpful to everyone out there. So team, that's it for 10 Talks today. Go out and make it a 10 day. We look forward to being on your support team. Thank you again to all the first responders, the people in the grocery store, the nurses, everybody that's taking great care of us. We want to take great care of you as well. Thank you for listening. We'd like to get you coached up. So head over to iTunes and Spotify and hit subscribe. And remember, a champion life is a 10 life. 
You and your life matter. Create a life that you love. Give hope to others and be and choose nothing but tens. Be you. The world needs you. Go to lifetrainingacademy.com to start your training and get coached.